What is up guys, Tim from Tim Didier Films here, back with another Blender Game Engine tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be responding to a comment I got which asked me how it would be possible to change the color of a progress bar based on how high or low its value was. And I'm going to be responding to that in this video right here. So if you already have a progress bar and you want to use this tutorial on that, that's great. I'm just going to create one for the sake of the tutorial and showing you guys how to do it. So what I'm going to do is delete the cube and add a plane which is going to be my progress bar. Then I'm going to hit numpad 7 and then tab to go into edit mode and G, X and 1. That's just going to move it over to one side so when I scale it it doesn't overlap onto the other side. Then I'm going to move it to one side of the screen like this and just scale it on the X axis until it reaches the other side such as that. Then what we can do is go to frame 20 and hit insert scaling. Then what you want to do is hit shift and left arrow to go to the first frame, then scale it down to something like this and hit insert scaling. Now what we're going to do is go to the animation tab up here and what we're going to do then is select the curve where our animation plays, so this one right here. We're going to select the top half of it and the bottom half of it and hit N. Then what we're going to do is go to active keyframe and switch it from Bezier to linear like that. By doing this we'll have a straight graph and every step that the animation takes will be exactly the same. Animation. Now what we can do is we can go over to the game logic layout and we can add a property to this object and we can call it value and switch it from float to integer and we can make it visible by switching from blender render to blender game clicking on this eye over here and under game you want to select show debug properties. Now if we hit play we can see that value right up in the left corner. What we need to do now is have this progress bar go up and down based on the value that we've just created right over here. So I'm going to have this value add and subtract by two keys. Again if you already have a progress bar this is not necessary. I'm just doing this for the sake of the tutorial. So I'm going to rename this to up and this to down and then I can minimize these right here. And I'm going to add two property actuators. Switch both of them from assign to add. And then select the property on both of them. The first one is going to be add and the other one is going to be subtract. And the add will add one. The subtract will add negative one. Then we can minimize these right here and connect them up to their respective sensors. What we can then do is add another property sensor and switch it from equal to changed and select the property and every time the property changes we want it to update this animation so we're going to add an action actuator select the action and change it from play to property and then select the property over here and connect these two together so now what we can see is that if we hit play and we increase or decrease the property the progress bar goes up and down so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a material to this object so we're going to go under the material tab add a new material and make sure it stays white. We're going to tick shadeless and we're going to tick object color down here. Then what we're going to do is hit N, go down to shading and switch it from multi texture to GLSL and close that menu right there and then make sure you're switched from solid to textured view. So now what we have is this progress bar and we can increase it or we can decrease it but the color stays the same the whole time and what we want to do is change it from red if it's down here all the way to white if it's at its maximum value. So we're going to make a little Python script to do this for us. And before we do that we're going to add a Python controller and connect it to the changed sensor right over here. Then what we're going to do is create a new Python script and I'm going to rename it to color.py and we can just add the script right over here. Then we can maximize this screen and we can begin coding. So the first thing we're going to type is import BGE. Then we're going to define the controller as CONT is equal to BGE.logic dot get current controller and the owner we're going to define as own is equal to cnt dot owner now we're going to define the property that we added to our character as our value is equal to own value since that's what we named the property that we added and then we can get into the color changing so if I can explain this really quickly what we want to do is change from white to red now red is defined as 1 comma 0 comma 0 that would be red and white would be 1 comma 1 comma 1 and since we can see that these two stay the same uh, we don't have to change those at all so own dot color is going to be equal to and since this value doesn't change 1 comma brackets comma brackets comma true now since this value is changing we're going to use it to change both of these values from zeros to ones and what we can do for that is define both of these as our value divided by 20 since we have 20 frames of animation on both of them 
So now what will happen is as this increases, these values are going to change from zeros to ones over the course of 20 frames as we've defined over here. So if I go back to my previous layout now and hit play, you'll see that it's red at the beginning and as it increases it becomes white up until 20 when it is completely white. And then as we go back down it'll change back to red until it's at its lowest setting at which point it is completely red. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the tutorial then definitely leave a like so that I can see that you enjoy these kind of tutorials. And if you hated the tutorial and you thought it was absolute <laughs> then you can leave a dislike. But in all seriousness, thanks for watching guys. Uh, if you want to see more of these type of videos, then you can hit the subscribe button and see the tutorials that I upload on a very irregular basis. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next tutorial.